everybody. Welcome to Embellish the Story. I'm so glad you're here today, and I just wanted to make a little fun envelope double pocket with you guys because I'm making these to go in my Etsy shop, and I'll leave a link to my Etsy shop in the description box. And this is, um, I was just making these fun little stuffed envelopes. It's been a long time since I've put these in my shop. Because I use, I like to do glassine bags, stuffed glassine bags, and then I thought I want to do an envelope. So I thought I would make one with you guys today. This envelope had a little decorative edge, but today I'm going to use a planner envelope. And because any envelope will do, absolutely any envelope, especially a junk mail envelope, if you've been collecting a lot of that. But just to kind of show you how this turns out. Um, I'm using Ooh La La Vintage Treasures Ruffles and Roses kit today, and I use that on this. And there, um, so there's a front pocket, and it's fun to stuff with little goodies. So I just did a little tag and a journaling card, and then there, an envelope gives you another pocket. And I just did a journaling card, a little scrappy booklet, and another um, journaling card. So these are fun to make. This would be perfect happy mail. And if you're new to junk journaling, this is a really easy pocket to make. It's probably one of the first ones I ever did because I didn't, I, I just didn't like to make measure. I still don't like to measure. And these just, you don't have to measure them. I will, saying that, I did I measure this and it's 5.75 by 4.25. And it's kind of folded there. And that doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter as long as it's not totally destroyed envelope what shape it's in. But since that's a little wide to fit on a journal page, because a typical journal page is maybe only five and a half wide, I am going to trim it down. So I've got my trimmer and I'm not the best at trimming down. So y'all just give me a little grace here. I'm just gonna take a tiny bit off of each side so that it's not too wide to go in a journal. So that should make it narrow enough. So now that I've trimmed the sides, I'm gonna need to glue that back. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on here so that I can have my pocket. I hope y'all are having a good day and your New Year's is off to a good start. New Year's always kind of a exciting time. I'm not a big New Year's resolution person, y'all. I just try to have some things I'm gonna work on and, you know, but I try not to hold myself to a New Year's resolution. Um, one of my New Year's resolutions is to be in my craft room more though, that's for sure. So, because I want to have fun. So, what we're going to do is just cover this. And in the, um, there's two Ruffles and Roses kits. And this one is just called Ruffles and Roses in um, Doreen's Etsy shop. And it's Ooh La Vintage Treasures. And I will leave a link to the her sh Doreen shop so you can um, shop in her beautiful digitals. She just has all kinds of beautiful digitals. So this one is called just Ruffles and Roses and it has some more pinks in it. And this beautiful digital, and this is just one of my favorite all-time digital sheets. I just love the rhinestones and the pearls and the lace and the crochet. I just love this. But this is from her vintage Ruffles and Roses. So that's um, Ruffles and Roses, Vintage Ruffles and Roses. And then I'm gonna use this little bow. And I already cut it out, but it came on this sheet. 
And this is actually from her Winter Memories Christmas Vintage set. But I love that bow, and it's just gonna kind of be a staple bow that I use, because even though it's in our winter set, it can go, uh, that's just a good basic bow to use. So pretty, it's layered, it's got two layers. So I'm gonna use this bow, and I already cut it out because it takes me a little time to cut this bow out, and I've already inked it. So let me set that aside so I don't lose it. I tend to lose little pieces like that. All right, so where are we gonna start? I'm gonna leave the envelope open, and I want it to look like a lacy envelope. Set this aside. So what I'm gonna do is use this beautiful page to cover the back and the front. And I'm just going to, and y'all, this is just so simple. Okay, my glue, come on glue. It's just such a simple, fun little pocket. And I had trouble with pockets when I first started crafting. I I wouldn't cut them straight and I didn't have a cutter. So that was part of the problem. And so I thought, well, I could, you know, this isn't a natural pocket. So that's how I started doing this. And envelopes have been used on lots of people's YouTube channels for pockets, so this certainly wasn't an original idea. It's just fun. And I love all of this, so I'm going to try to get that in there. And if you're going to glue this in to the journal, you certainly, you know, we don't have to, if we're going to glue it in, I wouldn't cover the back because you're not going to see it. But putting it in my shop... I'm not sure what people want to do with it. So I go ahead and cover the back so that it's pretty in case they want to float it and just clip it in with a paper clip. So, and it just takes a quick second to cover the back. So I go ahead and do that. Isn't that pretty? It just looks like a piece of lace. And then I'm gonna take, um, on the other one, I covered, I put two different things on the front, but this one I just want it to look like a lacy piece. So I'm gonna, uh, like a lacy envelope. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover it with the same image. And I'm just going to, I'm not gonna worry that I'm going all the way down here because what I'm doing is I'm going to cut the the bottom of the envelope is going to be my my top pocket, and this is going to be my bottom pocket. So I'm not going to worry. I'm going to go all the way down. I'm not going to glue put glue right here for sure because I will glue my pocket shut. So I'm just going to use the envelope as a little guide and make sure I don't glue myself shut here. and then cover it. And so I'm gonna go all the way down to the flap. So we're at five, seven, I'm gonna go all the way down. All right. And this is gonna be the prettiest envelope. This digital is so pretty. All righty, so. I'm just gonna trim that. I always say, you know, I always, the first thing I always do is make sure I'm using really pretty digitals because whatever I make is gonna be really pretty. So I love, ooh, all those digitals, they're all just so pretty. So look at that, it looks just like a, um, a lacy, envelope. Isn't that pretty? And um, this is 5.75 that I cut down and this part is 4.25. So what I'm going to do is this, the envelope is normally like this, but I'm going to turn it upside down and this is going to be my front pocket. So I want to cover this in this pretty little dress form. And I just want her right 
here because I'm going to put a bow on it. So I'm just going to kind of hold this up. She is going, so I want her on the right side. So I just kind of hold it up and see where I need to glue it. And then I, um, cause this, I didn't use, I used just a regular paperweight, like printer, like regular, you would print a letter on. Because if I use a heavier paperweight, then it's going to be a really thick envelope. So I'm not really, I want it, you know, it's already gonna be pretty substantial. So I want her on there. So I'm just gonna put her on here. I'm gonna trim it, so that's okay. So I've got her on there. And then I'm just going to trim that. Just gonna trim that down. And could this, all right, could this be so far? I don't think so. Alrighty, so I've got this part I want to trim. And I have this beautiful um, covered envelope. It's just so pretty. So, so pretty. And that is that quick. It probably didn't even take, you know, more than five minutes. Now, to get this pocket, I'm just going to glue on either side. And then I have my little pocket. So I have my little front pocket, and then I just need to open up the bottom of the envelope, because remember, it went like that. I just need to open up the bottom of my envelope to um, make my top pocket. So I'm just going to put this on here and trim the tiniest bit off this. Most of the time I use my scissors and I just kind of eyeball it, but it definitely is easier to get straight with my trimmer. So now I have this really cute, let me set that aside, little top pocket and a bottom pocket. And that is so much fun to stuff with things. And you know, I always have to kind of decorate it because that's the part I, that's my favorite part. So the first thing I think, let's, let's ink it. Let's ink it first. I should have inked this before I glued it down. So I'm bad about forgetting to ink. So we'll just put a little ink on there. All right. Oh, I've been cleaning out. I've been trying to clean out my closets a little bit. I think a lot of do I think a lot of people clean out at the beginning of the year, you know. But kinda see. <laughs> I don't know, it's just it's, you know, that time of year to out with some of the old and in with some of the new, I think. So I have just I picked just three laces that I use a lot. And I'm just going, this is like a crochet piece. And lots of times when I'm layering laces, I'll try to get them with different te um, textures. And I might put a heavier textured lace down on the bottom. And I'm just gonna let this kind of poke out the, um, kind of line the top. Let me get my fabric scissors. So that's kind of a heavier textured lace. And then this one is a um, is a much more delicate lace. And I thought I would just put it on the top. And you can see through it, it's very sheer. Sometimes I run ribbon through this. It's got little openings. And sometimes I run ribbon through that. 
but I'm not going to do that today because I'm going to use another lace with it. So I'm just going to lay that down. And then, and I like having, you know, so you can see two layers there. And then I've got this one, and it's really a different texture. This is a little trim. And I think these are all from my stash. Because this one's on this spool, I'm pretty sure I got it at Hobby Lobby or Joanne's or somewhere like that. This little cotton roses, and I think I'm just going to put those right there. So that gives um, me three really different looking trions, and that is kind of how I try to pick out laces with different textures. So there's a pretty little top. And I love the way that turned out. Make sure I got it straight before it starts to get good and dry. So I've got this beautiful lacy envelope with these rhinestones and pearls. And then I've got the little lace trim. And I love the stress form. I love her necklace and her rosettes. But I thought I would give her, like, she's got a little dress on here. And, the, and let's see how this turns out. I hope I, um, I think this will be pretty. So let's pretend like she's got on, hmm, a little dress here. So I just picked a, a scrap piece of tool. And I found, after struggling with tool for quite some time, that tool is, especially if you're going to put something on top of it, it's going to be at the bottom layer. It's easier to get to stick if you use a glue stick because I'm going to put glue on top of the tool and that's going to really be, it's going to hold it. So if I want to scrunch tool and not have to struggle with it too much, I just put it down with my, I finally learned to use a glue stick. Because I had done that with um, cheesecloth, that's how I put down cheesecloth if it's a bottom layer. And then I got to thinking, well, this is a lot of a texture like cheesecloth. So let's give her, um, so you probably could use a glue stick too. And then I was like, yep, that works. That's good. So let's give her a little ruffly, frilly top to her dress. This is that, this is a piece of chiffon silk. And I love it when it has where they, um, where it was sewn together. So I'm gonna put that and kind of bunch it on here. In this one, I'm gonna use tacky glue. I don't use, I, I tend not to use um, my art glitter glue for that because tacky glue just gives me a little more stickiness when I'm trying to gather. So I'm just gonna put this down and then just gather it and press. And I really just kind of let it fall where it wants to fall. I want this a little more in. So I don't mess with it. Uh-oh, there's a little bit of the ink on that. From where I it came like that. So I cut that off. And so it looks like she's got a little ruffly dress on. Isn't that pretty? And then I have kind of the ruffle kind of cascading off the bottom and I like that. So I'm just going to trim that a little. Oops. My fingers are getting sticky. So that's really pretty. Now we could put a little bit of sparkly on her. Y'all know I love a little sparkly. So I brought, this is my little, this is a little egg. Isn't it pretty? I found it at an antique shop. It was really inexpensive. So I keep my little sparkly bits in that because I had them all over the place. And so I put them in a central location. So I thought I would put a little sparkly on her. There's a button that I cut the back off of. Let's see. Yeah, I cut the back off of this button. That's really pretty. Like, she has on a little brooch. 
Let's see, do we like that? Oh, that's pretty. That kind of goes with her um, necklace there. I could use a smaller piece of sparkly. Let's see which one we want. I don't know, I just like to play with it. That's more understated. I think I wanted a little more prominent. And I just like the way that looks with her necklace. So I think I'm gonna use that. Now with my sparkly, I do use my art glitter glue. It just holds it better to me. So let's give her like a little brooch. That's fun. Give her a little dress and a little brooch. Oh yeah. Isn't she fancy? How pretty is that? All right. Now, I wanted to use this bow. And so, since she's on the right, I thought the bow would be pretty on the left here. And I don't want it to cover up her, so I'm going to put it over here. I'm going to let it um, extend beyond the envelope because I like that look. If I'm put, if I know I'm putting it in, you know, oh yeah, it's wide. So I'm gonna bring it in a little bit more. I don't want it to cover up her rosette, so I'm gonna extend it off a little bit. Um, I did go ahead and print on the back of the bow because I do that when I run off bows because more than likely I'm gonna let the bow be in a corner. So the back is usually gonna show. So I'll go ahead and put something on the back so it's not just plain paper when I run it. So I'm just gonna put this pretty little bow right here. Because I've got something on the right corner and then it balances it to put something on the left corner. And I forgot my wipe, so I'm gonna wipe it with my finger. And now I have my little envelope. Put my sparkly bits. So I have my sweet little envelope. I have my little pocket here. I have my top pocket. And now I can fill it with some really pretty things. So I was gonna show you some things I've been working on and kind of um, what kind of things I like to tuck in here. So here is a journaling card I made, not a journaling card. This is a tag I made and I did some collaging up top and I think it's really pretty. So it's taller, so I'll put it in the back. Here's a couple more. This is out of the same kit, these tags are. Um, here's a pretty journaling card. I needed to let that dry. It can tuck right there. It doesn't quite fit, so I'm gonna tuck it on inside. Oh, and because I cut the envelope down, it still doesn't quite fit. So I'm going to have to cut this journaling card down a little bit to get in there. This journaling card is this way, so this one will go. And this is her, so it'll go. You can tell I like her. She's so pretty. Here's a little card. This little ticket came from um, the fall kit, um, Harvest Waltz, I think it was called. So I just put that on here. And it's a shorter tag, so I'm gonna pop it in. Here's just a little scrappy booklet, and that's a fun thing to tuck in. I'm not letting my bow dry. I'm gonna have to... So that's a fun thing to put on. And the... here's a bigger tag. I can't remember where this image is from. It's from one of the Ulala kids. <laughs> But it looks like a handkerchief and I just put a piece of crochet into the little, little my bow is gonna come off y'all because I didn't let it dry I can just um, pop that in there and what it makes is just here's some more images this is a pretty journaling card so you can just keep filling this with as many goodies as you want and when we do that it just makes this pretty overflowing envelope full of goodies. So that's why um, I think it's the perfect Happy Mail piece because you just get this stuffed envelope full of beautiful things. So I love the way it turns out and I like to put things like this in my shop. 
And here's another one I wanted to show y'all I used, and I used this type envelope on it. And so then it gave me a more pointed pocket, and it's just as easy to pop things in. So I was making these envelopes because I've got a lot of embellishments that I've made um, during last year. So this is kind of a craft room clean out for me to get some of my embellishments that I have a lot of them um, just sitting in my craft room. So I'm making these little sets to finally make their way into Etsy when I get a chance to list them. I've had a couple of things in there lately. So um, my goal is to put um, more stuff in my Etsy shop this year, be more consistent. Because if you've followed me on Etsy or, you know, you know, I'm really hit or miss with that. So... These are one of my favorites along with glassine bags to make because I love the way they turn out when they're just full of fun journaling goodies. So I hope that you, if you like this, that you enjoy making this sweet little envelope. It's a lot of fun. I really do enjoy making these and they just make a beautiful presentation. So thank y'all for crafting with me today. I always say it's more fun to craft with y'all than by myself. And I hope you enjoy your day just doing whatever it makes you have, you know, that happy, fun feeling. And a lot of the time mine is just crafting, spending time with friends. And um, so you guys have a beautiful day and I will talk to y'all soon. Bye-bye.